bottom decoy is always going to be more important than the left decoy or the middle decoy because whenever he goes to the bottom side he will always you will always be able to de like he, you can always decoy the shots the shots will always be decoy when he goes to the left side later on in the fight like you'll be able to decoy the gem that he throws but you won't de be able to decoy the shots so the bottom decoy just has more value than any other decoy whether it's left or mid so that's why you want to tell people bottom decoy first going into gem spot and I don't think we really have decoys in this clip, in this video of Gems Block. So we'll just have, we were just forced to dodge. Uh, but as everyone's grouped up in the bottom left, we have standard buffs, and it's a very fast push. You get the coin face here, like where he's putting out shots, and just group up with everyone. And it's, it's like a it's safe spot. Nothing big. And then he goes into the second part of the fight where he does a different shot pattern. And this bottom one, you see he's tossing out green gems. Um, you can actually, you can decoy away from group. This is the one, this is why the, the bottom decoy is so good. But when he goes to the left side here, um, his shots won't be decoyable. You can decoy the gems that he tosses out. Like, see, he's throwing out blue gems, that's silence. Um, and, like, you can decoy the orange gems that he would shoot if he's over here, but you won't be able to decoy the shots. Uh, for this particular phase, when he goes to the right side, he'll shoot out a... Uh, he'll shoot out a thick shotgun that can be decoy, but the decoy has to be all the way in the upper right. Um, he'll shoot out some green shots if he goes top, that boomerang. And you see on the left side here, there's no decoying these shots. Like, it, it, it's a set pattern each single time. The only thing that can be decoyed are the gems that he throws out. And you see, he's throwing them at the nearest person. Same with the green gems here. Screaming something? Just wondering. Oh, shit. Why did no one say I was screaming? <laughs> I just came in. I noticed Bro. you were seeing stuff, and you were. Trying. I had the stream on, and then I I don't know when it. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was thinking he's he doing some kind of visualization. And I was like, I should, oh, have, my God. I should have interrupted him. He's really into it. Should have said something. <laughs> Holy shit! All right. You guys should have said something. Holy shit! Okay, so let me let me rewind a bit so we can, I, you can actually see, from these shots that I'm talking about. Oh man, that's so awkward. So the shotguns, we don't have decoys in this one, particular one, so we're forced to dodge, but you can decoy bottom. As I was saying earlier, bottom's the most important one because it can always be decoyed, but the left one, like you can only decoy the gems later on. We did we had a very fast push because this is a baller run, I think, and there's very low HP people, there's high reacts and all that good stuff. Um so you see he goes bottom here. These shots that can de be decoyed, and he's tossing on green gems. These gems can also be decoyed. Um, we don't really, we're not benefiting from any decoys at the moment, so we're forced to dodge. But normally, if you do have a decoy and you get it in the bottom side, you're in the clear. It's so easy. He goes to the far side. He shoots up this fat shotgun uh, with like nine different things. So like there's three here, three in the bottom, three in the top. If you were standing on top of him, you could human decoy it. Or if you had a decoy there, it could like draw all the shots away from the group. But it's uh, kind of unusual. And he throws up blue gems, which silence. He goes to the top side now. Um, these green shots will boomerang at this point in time. You want to make sure people are aware. Well, and he's also tossing out uh, armor-breaking shots here. And then finally, uh, skip forward. And he goes to the left side. So you can't see. You see, you can't decoy this shot pattern because it's just 360. Um, you can decoy these dazed gems though, and that can help with the damage. So it's nice to have a decoy to the left side. But it's not as necessary. It does help your damage if the decoys are there. Uh, but it's like you still feel, you're still forced to dodge a little bit. On this bottom side, once again, it can definitely be decoyed. We don't have any decoys here, so we're unlucky. You get the coin. There's actually a small trick you can do. Um, let me let me just pause back before the coin starts. Um, if you keep your eye and like eyes focused on the very center, like where my mouse cursor is. And you just follow the coin with your peripherals. That can help you a lot with tracking the coin. So uh, um, I want everyone to make sure to take a good look because I'm going to ask everyone where the coin is uh, in a second. Right. Left. Left. Hold on. I actually... right? That was me. Oh, uh, that's me. Small. It was yeah. the end of that up. Okay. Who, who says left? Nikki Brand. Who says up? 
I think I saw up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you second guessing yourself? You got it. Like, okay, so here's here's one thing. It doesn't matter if you call the coin wrong. You have to give an affirmative right away because if you delay a tiny bit, the people that are waiting in the bottom left are just gonna go auto fire on the bottom left because they have like a quick brain. It's it's the random mentality. It's it's just going to happen. So even if you call the wrong coin, you have to call a coin with confidence and get people to go there. And if you're right, great. If you're wrong, you just say, oops, my bad. <laughs> you see, it actually was, was the left coin there. No way. Um, like, we'll, uh, let's just rewind a little bit and give you another chance to follow it along. Uh, Too cracked. You missed and it once again, one, once again, I recommend keeping your eyes focused, like keep your eyes staring at the very center here at Gemma's Bach. And let your peripherals follow the coin. So let's let's give it a rip. It's starting in the bottom right. I don't see how that's not right. No, I still see it as right. <laughs> that's an ass. Like sometimes the coins can get rather tricky. And if you're wrong, no one is really gonna roast you about it. Like it, it, it's really not that big of a thing. If you get the wrong coin. What you want to do is damage control. You just want to chill on the bottom left with everyone because you'll be slowed and weak. So if you get the wrong coin, it'll be pretty obvious. Just make sure to tell them we're going to chill on the bottom left and we're going to wait for this counter to end. Then we're going to have to chase him. However, if you do get the right coin, what you see, it says, what? No. Um, then you should start your spiel because you know this next part, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to chase him around the room. And it would really help if you had a trickster that could get decoys behind him. Um, so what you want to say is, like when you see this, you say, okay, now we have to follow him around the room. Tricksters get ready to decoy behind him. We have to chase him. And then when you see him go to a coin, you could say, tricksters go to the top side, get a decoy behind him. If it goes to the left side, get a decoy behind him, please. We don't have decoys in this run. And then we push him really fast. So then you're, you're in the final part here where he's about to die. You want to tell people to go in the top left or bottom right because of the shop patterns that he's going to toss out and the gems. It just makes sense to be in the top left or bottom right. You see, um, this is like exact cutoff. If you were to cut this off, flip it in half and turn it upside down, then this the, the bottom right over here is the same as this top left over here. And the shop pattern, you see, the coin comes by, shots come back middle, and then, and then it'll swap over to the right side next if it was to continue the pattern and go back mid and then go back right, then back mid, then top left. But you normally end that really fast. You want to call Clover pretty fast for Gems Bach just because it happens uh, at a very fast rate. But overall, Gems Bach is like the easiest of the mini bosses and um, you get through that pretty fast. So let me go over to Dama now. I'm going to pull up a recording this time at the start. You never dare, never dare. Are you saying like easy or hard as a reader or as a leader? As a leader, uh, as a as a leader, Gemsbach is by far the easiest one to lead. Uh, because I think so. I think it'd be Luke Oryx. I think it'd be the I think it'd be Dama actually. I feel like Dama is like, well, like all of them okay, are pretty so easy to lead. All of them can be pretty easy if you come at it with the right mindset and you have the very like and, and you're calling the basic things like Gem Spock will run itself for the most part as long as someone calls for the right coin. Uh, it's not as essential. It's just like if I were to leave ways to it, I, I'd trust them to get through a Gem Spock more than anything. A Besa would also be fine too, but it just takes them longer. And you want to be efficient because when you're going into Oryx, you, they need to have some amount of trust in you. So when you tell them, go get a tower, they'll go get a tower instead of just like, Oh no, I just want to sit here and shoot Oryx. Because getting towers is the crucial part. But I'm getting a little ahead of self because we're still on the mini bosses. So let's just go ahead and skip to Dama. Dama, much like Gemspock and all the other mini bosses, is a scripted boss fight. Um, he's going to start off by, if you keep shoot him, he's going to do a knife wall, which you guys know the stick and knife wall counter. And you see we shoot him here, so we got a stick and knife wall counter. We just can't, we, we just do our best to dodge. You tell Raiders to dodge, make sure that the dodge not have to eat too many knives. They pushed up for damage if they're a Chad and you can do that. Because it's like, it's not too bad damage phase, especially if you're in a baller run. Um, 
And okay, so first off, you type stuff with conjure your demise, and then he'll go into a rotation phase, and then he'll go into a portal phase. And you can you can tell like he's got two different colors, a red conjure your demise and a green conjure your demise. And the green conjure your demise will give you a green rotation phase, which gives you a green portal phase. And into the knife wall. And then he picks another conjure your demise, which can be either green or red. And if it's red portals near at the start, then it'll be red portal phase. I mean, red conjure your demise into red rotation into red portal. So just starting off here, we see the, we see these green, these portals on the inside here are green. So we know it's going to be the AFK one. It's the green portal phases. So we're going to have a green rotation now. You see that they see the walls he's shooting out a green. And then he's going to go, it's going to be a very fast push into a green portal phase. You see, uh, it should be about here where he tosses out his portals. So he's ramping up for the portal. At this time, you want to call for a decoy if there are uh, fixtures that can uh, decoy. I think this is the, this is the PPE uh, 03 run that we did uh, a long while ago. So there's not really many tricksters, but if you call it up ahead of time, you really want to do what when he's ramping down. You see it's the green portal phase. It's kind of going down to the group because there were no decoys. Kind of a shame. You want to tell people to like, are oh, there are these walls with shots here? These aren't too bad damage wise to cross through them. But after a little bit, you want to like you want to tell people they can cross through the wall, but also cross back in and do damage because this is a pretty decent damage phase, actually. And it's just that people were scared. So after that, after the portal phase, we have the knife phase, knife phase that I talked about. Hold on, I have a and, question. Uh, we'll just save it for the end of Dhamma. Uh, let me continue going here. And then we'll have Kanji Demise after this once again. So you see there's a Kanji Demise. I check the color. It's green again. We'll have green portals, which means it's AFK. Okay, so something to note is that once Dhamma reaches half HP, he's going to shift from doing uh conjure demise rotation portals into doing my asthma sons and he'll indicate that by being like you see he's invincible at the moment like he can't do damage to him he'll be flashing blue and uh, there's like a couple other indicators like you like the portals will start to go away in a little bit and you want to tell people to group up in the bottom left for sons of my asthma just to be all grouped together um if you're on another platform you are pvping even if you're in the top right platform it's not as bad it's still considered a PvP because it does drag shots away from group uh, in an awkward angle and makes it harder for them. So just generally, once you start flashing blue, you want people to be aware that Miasma or Sons is coming up next and that they should be in the bottom left or getting there right away. Because the sooner you let them know, the more time they have to make this, they, they have, the more time they have to make the decision to make their way to the bottom left. So you see we're all here in the bottom left because we was called early enough. And so it's a little bit of a spicy rotation, um, just because we're all PPEs, I think. But that's basically your miasma, stuns. Like you want to get people to group up on one side. You want to call for decoys to the to the sides away from the group, because these red stuns will shoot arrows, and the arrows armor break, and armor breaks make the fireballs take that do that much more damage. And that's so the decoys are nice, and you want to tell them to just go ahead and damage. The shit out of uh, Dama here. Because you can actually do a shift, like, the more damage you do to Dama uh, during these phases, the less the less of a miasma you might have afterwards. So you see, we actually push him to his, uh, I think it's like final 15% or so, where he enters Disintegrate. And if you get Suns and you have really good damage, you can push him quite excessively with, uh, uh, with damage that, um, that he won't that he won't enter miasma because you've done all the damage during suns. So when you get suns, make sure they call for decoys and tell them to push up and do damage because the more damage here, the stronger miasma. Miasma used to be a lot spicier. People are getting better at it and people are getting a bit more practice with it. But uh it's still kind of spicy at times. So we skip up. We have uh, the attempt to great the normal calls are to get them tell people that say spots are behind portals. Uh, dodge the arrows and keep doing damage to Dama. We have to kill him to end it. Uh, you can call for silences if you feel like it. I don't normally feel like it because people know like they should be dodging everything. But honestly, in my opinion, if you have to take a shot, eating a red fireball is the best one because there's no status effect. 
It is a chunk of damage, but it does get reduced by defense as long as you're not armor broken from the red arrows or stricken from the green arrows. Eating a red fireball is not the worst thing. Even a blue one, not the like, same deal as the red ones, except that it silences you. Getting people to push up and do damage and kill him is most essential. And then, of course, when he dies, you want to tell people to keep on dodging until the shots clear away, because these portals will last for a little bit afterwards. All right, someone had a question for Dama? Yeah, so in the green, in the, like the big green for portal phase, right? Oh, where should we throw the decoys? Or like, are you, are you going to ask for decoys to the other side of the room? or You, you want a decoy in the center. In the center, okay. In the and center is the nicest spot. spot. Because then... Okay. As a follow up, and what do we do if there's no decoys? Like, what do we call or whatever? No decoys, then uh, I would walk away from it. (laughs) I would walk away from it. If you're leeching in a corner and a portal comes and stuffs you, that's your fault. You shouldn't be leeching in a corner. Um, It would be nice if a trickster were to decoy, but if they don't decoy and you're leeching in a corner, uh, I really recommend going back in. And I would have said as much earlier when I said, uh, I was talking about this wall here um, during the green portal phase. I said it's it's not so bad to walk through it damage wise, but I would tell people to walk to push back through to come in and do damage after they leave if they get pushed out by something like a portal, because you don't want to be stuck by a portal and like in a corner by the portal and wall. I I think someone sent me a clip of like some people like someone dragged the portal on the bottom left during one of my runs and like I think eight eight eights pop because. The portal exploded at the end, and they were forced against the knife walls that Dama spawns on the sides of the room. And really, ultimately, if the portal quashes someone that's leeching in the bottom left, this person this person is not beneficial for your run. Like, I mean, I wouldn't like I I would prefer it if portals didn't kill off my raiders, of course. But if you're leeching in a corner, you're not doing anything, and a portal comes and squashes you. Um, I'm not going to be too upset about it. Like, there's not much you can do if someone tries this. Like, someone wants to drag a portal on the bottom left when you don't have decoys. You could try to de- drag it around the room yourself, but ultimately, you're the raid leader, and you need to make it through the whole run. So don't put yourself in a dangerous situation that you can't make it through. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Because, like, like, it really would be nice that if everyone can make it through. However, I, it's up to the Raiders to make their decisions and try to follow my orders. And being in the ring without the portal is very nice. If it's on a decoy, it's pretty safe, too. And if you're leeching the corner and someone drags a portal on you, not much I can do to help you. Like, you've put yourself in that position as a Raider and you've allowed yourself to get cornered. Like, uh, there's not much you can do about that. You just have to accept that some people are just going to have the nexus or die on your ends. But that's it for Dama for the moment. So if there's no more questions, I'm going to go on to the Corix. None? Okay, let's uh, pop a little Corix recording. Base, base about. Oh, we're going to do base after. So the only thing you okay, sorry, yeah, you go first. Uh, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Uh, for decoys, mid uh, green portals, it's the huge, big green circle. Then red portals, if I'm not wrong, it's the ammo breaking bombs. Like he shoots up bombs that ammo break in red portal phase. I'm not too sure about that one. Oh, were you asking about the red portal phase, Elijah? Yeah, yeah. Like at the end, we you have to, you have to decoy mid okay, so he shoots up bombs. You can decoy away from the group. Uh, because there are a couple little shots during the red portal phase that will target people, but really it doesn't make too much of a difference in my opinion. And uh, it's, it's never really been a big concern. You could call for a decoy mid during red portal phase, but it's so much harder to do that. And honestly, I'd rather have my tricksters that are willing to do decoys save themselves until we get to orcs when I would actually like a decoy during a chase phase or a phase where, uh, like, armor crumples where I can get the group in and doing stuff. So I don't particularly care about decoys during red portal phases. You can use them to some degree, uh, but I don't know. Personally, it's just my personal opinion. Um, I, I, I don't fuss too much about it because it, 
make such a neg negligible difference. Okay. All right, let's go on to the corks then. The cork is a pretty simple boss, pretty simple boss fight because this is the same fight every single time. Um, he's got a couple different attacks that he uses in the first phase that he'll repeat in the third phase. And phase two and four is the exact same. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure anyone here that's completed a Luke Corks knows how Luke Corks fight goes because it's the exact same every single time. What you want to do, though, is you want to encourage people to stay pushed up during the first phase and the third phase. Because the more people, like, there's only a limited amount of time where you can damage the Corks, but because he will go invulnerable quite a bit during this during the first phase and the third phase. And if they're not pushed up, they're not going to be doing damage. And there's a bunch of these patterns, these shot patterns that um, it's just easy to dodge when you're pushed up. Like this, well, this one particular pattern is a great one to show because like if you're pushed up, it's so much easier to push in through the sides. And I'll constantly be telling people, stay pushed up, stay pushed up, stay pushed up during the night fight. Um, when you're the raid leader, it's okay to be back just a tiny bit to look for orbs because it's your job to call out orbs. Uh, it's also your job to stay alive and be doing damage. So you want to encourage people to stay pushed up, but you also want to be keeping a watchful eye for any orbs that might be coming in. There's again another phase that comes up with orbs. You see I'm moving back. I see the orb over there. Um, it's just part of being aware. Like, so you have a you have the one you have another pattern. You can go to the cross. There's like a safe spot on the cross over here. It's not so bad, but you should encourage people to push up after every single wave to do some damage because like you want to get him pushed. You you want you want the corks to be a fast fight. He's stationary, which is rare, like uh, during the mini bosses, and it should be one of the fastest and easiest ones, depending on you encouraging raiders to push up and keeping an eye on orbs. There's not much to say about the corks, so I have to keep on skipping forward to phase two here. He gets people. He gets pushed into phase two. You get people to group up in a dot. You tell them. Uh, if they're leeching to shoot orbs, change directions at the each beam and don't sit on candles is the general uh, consensus. And if you see an orb coming from the far side, call for a uh, call for a slow, call for other uh, other stuff too. Okay, I think this. Uh... Yeah, just ignore this. Uh, I had bad connection here. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, but like phase two should be very fast because most people should be rotating like this. Okay, so once you get the phase three, you really want to pay attention to the first set of orbs. They'll just like even even if they start going close to him, even if they're small, you can just tell people to kill them because it can get like I, I've seen orbs that like like I've seen it a bunch of times. So little orbs just go like they're, they're following this little path over here, and then they start to drift towards the core because a little clue close, and then they decide, okay, I'm going to go big, and then they and you get an instant like third counter. So if you see that kind of behavior, just tell them to kill the orbs. Ultimately, though, you want them to be at half HP and slowed. Because uh, if you kill them, they can respawn and instantly go big, and that can make it so much harder, especially if you have tentacle phase. This tentacle phase will push people back to the L here, and when they're back here, if the orbs are in the front, it's going to be so much harder to hit them, especially for the melee players, um, and that's one way that you get a counter. So having a slow, calling for slows, being a slow yourself um, is a great way to do it. I, I know I had a foamy here. I think there were so many, like, in this particular one, we had so many staff in it that we were like, uh, we're just, we're not going to stop a counter, we're not, but like, we're not going to, like, actively try to stop a counter, so that's why I wasn't using slow. Normally, I would have, uh, believe me, uh, we, we, we were just doing a meme run, I believe, at the time. Uh, so once again, call for decoys behind the corks. He shots boomerang. If you do get shots coming through, then you want to call for them. Make sure, you call, make sure you're aware of orbs as raid leader and telling people to stay pushed up. Because if they're pushed up, they're doing more damage. It's just kind of kind of awkward because boomerang shots, no decoys and stuff. But as long as you're telling people to stay pushed up and you're keeping damage going and watching out for orbs, new corks is very simple. Then you have phase four, which is the exact same as phase two. Um, on rare occasions, uh, you'll have the group doing a lot of damage and you have an orb, like let's just say this top orb went large. Um, judging by our damage from the corks and the distance from the orb to the corks now, it would be better just to tell people to ignore the orb and kill the corks. Uh, that's a very uh, occasional thing that can happen. It does happen not 
too rarely, but it does happen every now and then. So it's nice to be aware of that like little bit. So you see this orb over here. Like we just tell people to ignore it and just focus the corpse because uh, the corpse is going to die sooner than the orb is going to reach it. And it's not a big concern then. Any questions with the corpse before I go on to Besa? No. All right. Well, Besa, in my opinion, is is the one that will always be able to be run by itself without raid leaders. However, uh, if raiders can listen to the raid leader, they can make the run so much smoother. Um, the problem is getting them to listen to the raid leader. And I think a couple, like one theme that I'm going to like touch on a lot here is setting yourself up for success. And I, the reason I left Beza for last especially is because you have to set yourself up for success a lot during Beza as a raid leader. And the same applies in large part to orcs. So going in right away, I'm pretty sure everyone here that's completed an O3 knows that we group up where for Besa? Someone on mute. Bottom of this card, right? Oh wait, wait, in which phase? The very start. Oh, the bottom, bottom right in the middle carpet. Yes, I want everyone to like everyone to know it's bottom right. But why bottom right? Not you, Nikki Brand. <laughs> someone else. I want someone to tell me why we grew up in the bottom, bottom right. right. You want your nickels vulnerable there. Like, your nickels vulnerable in the middle. And if you're at the bottom, if you're at the bottom right, uh, he's going to rotate to the top. So you're going to be in a more okay, fall so, position to like catch him there. Yes. So, so he becomes vulnerable once he reaches the bottom middle side of the carpet. That's why we grew up in the bottom right. So you see, once he's reaching bottom middle here, there is screen rotation on. Um, he becomes vul vulnerable, and like, since we're all, like this is the very uh, like this is the easiest time to be grouped up at the very start of a fight, um, and you'll notice this later on in the fight uh, because Besa is technically also a scripted boss fight. It might not seem like it, but Besa does follow a pattern. It's just a lot more loose because he moves around a lot, and damage can be iffy because he's moving so much. Um, so once he, so he starts off from the bottom, he goes to the top right. We all shove him. We all group up together with the raid leader and we drag him along the top wall. Da -da 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 -da. Then he goes into things. Okay, so going back to this, to go, uh, let me just skip back a little bit. So bottom right, um, when you're all grouped up, it takes about half a carpet, maybe a bit less, when you're all grouped up to push him into his next little sequence because. This first little bit, we're going to call it the, earth, the inner rotation. Anytime it goes mid and rotates around the inner side of the carpet, that's our inner rotation. We'll just keep that as a constant theme. So this is an inner rotation, and he goes from an inner rotation into a chase phase or a charge phase, however you want to call it. And it's going to be the same thing every single time. Every time we have an inner rotation, he's going to do a charge. And during the charge, he'll keep a set distance from the group or from a player. Um, so from the nearest player to them, he's going to keep a nearest distance. And you just see, so Fatto is pushing in, and he's keeping his distance from Fatto. And once he can push him, like, Fatto can't go any further than this, uh, then Beta, oh, look, there's a lava god. i send that to Paddock real fast, sorry. Uh, I just, yeah, take this. Okay, I'm good. Um, he'll keep a set distance. So, like, we're, we're all hugging the wall during this charge phase. And base is going to keep the set distance from us. So as we move back, he'll, he's going to follow us until we do a certain amount of damage. Once we do enough damage, he's going to he's going to stop his charge and enter a, a set of staggerable phases. And this particular one is standing ground and fight. He's going to chase after the group, and because we have good damage, we're all grouped up. We're going to get a stagger on him. Every time he's staggered, um, every time he's staggered, he's going to make the group he's going to silence everyone and you just can't do anything for a little bit uh, and because we did enough damage during uh, during that uh, staggered he is damage cap because you can only do so much damage so to recap just a tiny bit there's an inner rotation followed by a charge followed into a stagger and after the after the stagger phase um he's going to go back into an inner rotation and after inner rotation is always going to be a someone chase phase Yes, chase phase or the charge phase, and then it's going to be followed by another stagger phase. And then after that, so this is in a rotation, charge, stagger, in a rotation, charge, stagger, 
After that, he's going to do one final in rotation, which is going to be followed by someone else. A charge. Which is going to be followed by... A stagger. There you go. So it is a, it is technically a scripted fight. If you look at it in a, like a big picture, pop down like that, it's it's got it's got a set pattern, much like uh, the Quartz has got its first phase, second phase, and the first phase and third phase are the same as the second and fourth. Basa does have a set pattern, but it's just a different kind of grouping, and he moves around a lot. So we see he's about to go into after inner rotations in a little bit here. Forces the infinite. He just does like a figure eight throughout the room. The, uh, so. Something that you should know as a Raybeater is that since he's entering in rotations next, you should try to get the pe pe people to group up. Because if you do it like you did at the, at the very start of the fight, we grouped up in the bottom right to start the in rotations. It became damageable on the bottom middle part of the carpet. Um, when he goes mid here, if you're all grouped up, like how much in the very first in rotation, how much of the carpet did he rotate around before he was pushed into the charge? Anyone know? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. During the first inner rotation, we grouped up in the bottom right at the very side of the fight, and he started off with an inner rotation. How much of the carpet did he rotate around before he was pushed into charge? Uh, like... Amish troll? Uh, half? One and a half? Like half a carpet, okay. Yeah, it's like uh, the right side-ish. Kind of. Yeah, we took him to the top right side. So here's a trick that I've observed like if you know he's going to enter in rotation you should try to get people to group up this will be like part of setting yourself up for success uh, because once he enters the inner rotation if you're all grouped up he's going to be about half a carpet before he's pushed in the charge and if you're all grouped up you should know one where his charge is going to start and two like when you should be telling them because you want to tell them which corner they like you want them to come to ahead of, before he enters the charge phase uh, because you need to give people in, some extra time before they uh like you need to tell people early because telling people things early is telling them on time because they have, they have to process what you say and they have to find their path there um so at the start of the fight because we're all grouped up in the bottom right he's always going to be pushed in the top right right away so i know when he's over here that i should be telling people come to the top right now come to the top right in three two one come to the top right top right and like they we did top left this time for some reason it's fine but um you saw that he was pushing the top right because that was about a half a cover rotation the damage is consistent so the next time he does any rotation if we were all grouped up i would know he's going to be pushed around the bottom right and or top right and i can call one of those corners ahead of time to help with the pull because some people were going to be prepared. It's like you saw that one guy that went, you see, you see, okay, I see Jin over there going up and left away from group. That's that's because the raid leader didn't call where they should be going. Um, actually, I think this is Jin's Tiro and Jin's in here. Hi, Jin. Dude, why are you putting me on blast like that, man? It's fun, um, though. But like you see, like everyone else was grouped up for that for the most part. And okay, so. We have an in rotation, charge, stagger, in rotation, charge, and then he does his second set. His second set of staggers is going to be slightly different phases than the first one. This one's pretty simple. He just goes around mid. Um, you can call for decoys mid. You can call for stasis. As we see, we have decoys mid. The decoys mid keep the falcons in the mid, and we can just we just damage Captain right here, so we don't have his other two phases. The other two phases, like there's an orange one where he goes in and out of mid, and you just tell Raiders, uh, just follow him in and out of mid. Um, then there's there's this one which is disrupt the outside where he, uh, he it's kind of like the charge except that he uh, he does like he he does come a little bit closer, um, and he shoots out a lot of shots. It's not too bad as long as you stare him down and don't let him sit on you, and he'll back away and give you space. So once again. After the after this after the damage cap, what do we have? Someone? Fifteen second silence. Fifteen second silence, and then Elijah. Uh, I don't know. After the fifteen second silence. Uh, another rotation phase. Another rotation, yes. Another inner rotation. 
because that's the pattern. So once you just once you're familiar, so what should you do for the inner rotation? All right, we discussed it. Someone else. Uh, how about Jin? Yeah, what's up? Uh, what are we supposed to do for the inner rotations? Usually, yeah, you, like, you know, inner rotations about to happen. What should you be doing? Yeah, so you call it beforehand that you want to group people up at a specific location. So usually, right, because you, you know, need... yeah, because you know the inner rotation is coming, yeah. and so you should prepare for that. And I would have called group up in the bottom right, maybe or top right. You see, inner rotating, we're not grouped up, so it's hard to tell when he's going to be pushed. So you can't do anything preemptively. So it's very hard for you to set yourself up for success. However, if you were all grouped up and then you had the inner rotations, then you would have consistent damage. You would have a consistent push, which means you would know where he would be going. So that helps you with the damage during the charge, makes it a fast charge. But like Besa, like even if you don't do all these calls, like Besa is going to get done. It's just going to be very slow and it's going to be very awkward. And people will like start calling you out for that. But if you at least try, then you can expect some things. You see this control the outside, this final set of stagger phases. Um, it's pretty simple. He's going to pick a coin. He's going to go around uh, counterclockwise in the room. Just follow him along. Just be aware. You need to tell people to be aware of the slow because if he gets slow, like he doesn't keep a set distance. He'll just plow off you. And with all these shots, you just get insta popped. And then there's another one. Oh, you got to get the birds too. You got to watch out for them. Um, then there's strike through all end. There's what, is, what else is there? Um, flank them. Like flank them. Like he does a V of, uh, red splash shots while following the group and that's pretty simple uh the one that you need a little might might need a little bit of information about uh, as a new raid leader is strike through all ends um strike through all ends does have a set pattern um and it all depends on which corner he goes to first so seeing over uh, so seeing over here he goes to the bottom left first um i'm going to ask you guys to i'm going to ask let's see what are we going on the list i'm going to go down the list here and uh, I'm going to give you guys a tip beforehand on how to know which coins he's going to go to. Um, and I want everyone to have a turn doing it, apart from like Nikki Brand and Jin, who already have experience. Why you two can fuck uh, off. Why me participate? Well, because you're already a raid leader. Uh, so chill. Like, um, so straight through all ends, he's going to pick a corner first. If he goes to the left side, he's going to go diagonally. If he goes to the right side, he's going to go horizontally. So chemistry. Are you there, Chemistral? Yeah. Okay, keeping in mind the two rules of if he goes left, he's going to go diagonally. If he goes right, he's going to go horizontally. Can you tell me what pattern he's going to go starting from bottom left? Uh, top right. Top right. And then he's on the right side, so he's going to go... Top left. And then... Bottom right. Very nice. Aaron, John, Johan... If he went top right first, what's his pattern? Top right, he'll go to top left, and then bottom right, and then peak bottom left, right? Yeah. Uh, Nini. I think I've already done this with you, Nini. Top left first? Yeah, top left, bottom right, then bottom right, bottom left, bottom left, top right. Elijah, he goes bottom right first? He's going to go bottom left, top right, top left, bottom right. Uh, he doesn't go back to bottom right. No. He only does the bottom right. So uh, another fun thing to know about Strike Through Islands is that it is a time-based phase, which means that it runs for a set amount of time. So if he's near mid, then the last corner, he's going to do a really far push uh, on his last uh, yeah on his last corner. However, if he's uh, if if he's far from mid, he might not even peak the last corner just because it's based on the amount of time. Just a fun fact. Um, okay. Not irrelevant at times uh what you want to do for raiders though is that you want to do the math so i see he's going to the bottom left i know he's going to go top right top left bottom right i want to scream that out like much when you have splendor during orgs you say right left down up or right mm -hmm. left down up right um you want to tell them the order and then you want to tell them the corner uh as it goes by like so like so he's going bottom left he's going to go top right top left bottom right go to the top right now I'll go to the top left next and then bottom right like so they can have time to get there ahead of time because there's all these shots if you give them time they'll go there but if you don't give them that kind of time and grace period then it's not going to happen so uh, you, you see people going here going to the top left and that's basically that's basically most of the base of fight you keep in mind this uh the um the overarching inner rotation charge 
uh, staggers until damage cap and rotation charge staggers until damage cap and rotation charge daggers until he dies. Like then base is kind of an easy fight to imagine. Even if you're not very good with it, it's still gonna run by itself. So I think that's all the mini bosses. Do we have any questions for Beta before I go on? Don't think so. Nope, nope, I guess we're good. Okay, so let's go on to some orcs. Let's see, I had a good orcs clip here. Give me a moment. I'm just trying to find my orcs clips. All right. Okay, here's an orcs clip. Starting off in the orcs fight, the first thing you want to do is tell people to spread out on towers. Uh, like, I personally have a script for it. I say spread out on towers, get a decoy mid, kill your tower, and then push in. That's a standard call now. In the past, towers used to be of more importance than they are now. Right now, they are still pretty important. But for the first tower set, we just tell people to kill the towers because um, during Celestial, tower rotation timings will be reset. So if they get a little bit off in this first half of the fight, it doesn't it's not really as essential previously if you had a small slip in the tower timings that slip would amplify over time from going from from every time every phase after um from the very start so you wanted to get them down in a set or a set pattern but nowadays just because of the how celestial resets tower timings we just tell people to go ahead and spread on towers and you want to make sure, like your job as the raid leader is to one, make it through the whole run, and two, make sure towers are being called and going down. You don't have to be in there for the top damage. You can be leeching in the corner, but you need to make sure that towers are going down. So you see we're all spread on these towers. We kill a tower, which I admit there's some people with so many human decoying. Um, yeah, there we go. There's a push on the tower. You should have some understanding on which faces are guards and staggers. Um, we do have, if you go into um, the STD channels uh, up in the top left somewhere, uh, I think it's around staff information now. No, it's House of Learning. If you go down House of Learning, there's leading guides. Um, and we do have a whole set of orcs leader guides where you can pull up uh, which, which faces are guards and which is the staggers. If you actually go there right now and can take a look at the, the like pull the screenshot of um like that yo has it's near the top it shows you which ones are guards and which is the staggers if you don't know those that's the very first place you should start learning from just because knowing guards and staggers is really important um let me see where am i going with this okay so <clears throat> Uh, okay, so killing towers and then pushing in mid. So at the start, you might get a guard, you might get a stagger if you have good DPS. We have a large group, so it's not expected. And you want to make sure you're reacting to phases. You can use visual indicators. You can use the chat to tell what phase he's doing. Um, personally, I use a combination of both. Uh, you want to be able to call out the phase as well as a call for it. Like if it's out of rotations, rotate with him. Make sure to hug the wall if you need to. Um, do some damage. Like, this is very simple calls. If, as long as you see a phase and you can call it out as well as your call, like what you want to call for it quickly, then you're in you're in good standing, and you can work on it to make it more natural as the more you do it. Um, so arcs will reset between two and five phases, and guards and staggers count as one phase. So right now he did cowardice. He did an out of rotations. We got a stagger. And so that would count as three phases. So potentially, orcs can reset. More than likely, orcs won't go to his full five phases. It's very unlikely that he does his full five. But it does happen every now and then. So when you get to phase three, you want to tell people, you want to be getting people to intercept him on either his path mid or waiting for him to go mid at some point. And so... Like you see, at the very start of the fight, um, 
I'm going to tell people to path mid during this because he's on three and he's going to re he's more than likely to reset. And you get a lot of damage during that. You will tell people to go top right right afterwards. I think it was just an awkward reset, so we just stayed grouped up and yeah, we did get grouped up in the top right. So the fast push the dominance. Um, so shield dashes. If you have a decoy out, decoys make shield dashes and fairy jumps do weird things. So it's a lot harder to get a stagger during this. But it is possible with large groups as long as you're telling them where to drag it, like during shield dashes. It's blender right left down up right. Uh, it's pre exalted, so you don't get the extra right. And because he's against a wall, not always the best phase to push in. But people do when you get a stagger. Just tell people to push in though. Um, and like where he is, sometimes it's helpful too. And it's always good to call path mid, especially at the guard, even if it's on two. Sometimes it just does it, and you never know. Um, it's a great way to get people to group up. Grouping up can be very essential in your runs. It's the difference between getting a guard or getting a stagger. Um, every time, every time there's a reset, every time there's a, a new like a new sequence, like we went into dominance, we group up in the top right. He's resetting, we group up in the top right. Uh, it's it's just. And it's just a really good place to group up for some of the phases, but also to help ensure damage. Because when you're grouped up, uh, the damage will just be a lot more effective than when you're not grouped up. Uh, because buffs will be spread out. The people that are that are newer are going to be hugging the wall. Uh, but if you're all clustered up, then you give the new players like a good place to stand. Because they see the cluster of people and they go, it must be safe to stand there, so I'm going to group up there. So pre-exalted, top right is the easiest spot to group up in because if he does inner rotation or outer rotation, he's going to go to the top right first and you can catch him for as much damage as possible then. So that's partly why we say top right over anything. So just going forward here, you see a stagger phase. If we're all grouped up, we're probably going to get that stagger. And yeah, that's... Okay. So there are thresholds when Orcs enters different parts of the fight, when he enters dominance, when he enters dance, exalted, celestial, heavens, and when he enters his chest phase. And that's a percentage of his max HP. Um, he enters uh, he enters dominance at eighty percent. He enters dance at sixty percent. Exalted at fifty percent. Celestial at forty percent. Heavens at twenty percent. And he technically, quote unquote, dies at five percent of his max HP. Um, something that is good to help you gauge the fight without actually looking at his HP bar are staggers. Because to stagger him, you need to do 5%. And when he's down, you can do a maximum of 5% damage. So in total, a stagger can give you 10% of his damage. So if you get two examples um, at the very, from the very start of the fight, if you get two staggers, chemistry, how much damage do we do? Uh, 20%. And that would lead us straight into dominance, yeah? Yep. Uh, and if we're if we just into dominance and we got two staggers, how much damage do we do? With the twenty percent, which puts us at sixty percent, and then we go into dance. It's perfect, uh, Nini. We did a we did a, we did a we did a stagger right after dance, just like in the recording. Where are we at? We get pushed to exalt. <laughs> exalted. He's exalted. He does panic and scream, and we get a stagger. Elijah, where are we at? Celestial. Celestial, because another 10%. So even without looking at it, if you get a stagger, you can roughly say that we did 10% of damage. So when he's dying, like when he's in heavens, he's at 20%. And he dies at how much percent, someone? Five. Five percent. So if you get one stagger, you know that it's just, you're, like, you're basically one good shove away from killing him at that point. So you don't even need to look at the HP bar to know that. So if you get a stagger during heavens, you should be really excited about that. It's just something to keep in reference. Like you don't even need to look at the HP bar to see that kind of things. And it, it really it can really impress raiders if you're aware of that and you're calling out like if you see the second stagger during uh like during the very start of the fight, like okay, we're gonna go push him straight into dominance here. Um because part of raid leading is getting people to have confidence in you and doing what you say. And if you don't have uh, like some people some people are naturally charismatic, like they have like when they talk. People want to listen and they want to follow what they say. And there's people like me that aren't as charismatic, but we make up we make up for it with knowing what we're talking about during the fight. We give good calls, and these calls will give them safety as well as uh, a fast run. And 
you do that you do that from the you do that from the very second you enter osync from clearing from the mini boss from going in and killing towers pushing in and saying things like okay just push them straight to dominance it's those little things that will add up and help you build rated confidence because you want raiders to be listening to you when you get into heavens heavens is where you enter sweat mode and it can it just a tiny little bit of difference in dps can get you a guard or a stagger and that could secure your run so let, let me just skip back a little bit we were talking about hp thresholds so you stagger good stuff always gives you a nice 10 percent. so let's keep on going on in this fight right now cowardice i see it's a quick guard so if we're all grouped up and this is a stationary phase it's probably we're probably going to have really good damage because being grouped up because there's consistent damage we have all the buffs all the damage um so i'm expecting this to guard so i would call for a quick guard you'll see this in other phases too like cosmos um sometimes during like a decoy armor break i can expect a quick guard so you need to call that kind of thing you need to expect it because Get a quick guard then you don't want people to think like so we get unfortunate with towers here towers come up and prevent us from guarding him um we get an out of rotation like this so this is a nice little bit of a, a unique thing so normally towers are my major focus i want to get towers down right away and he's too but he's doing out of rotation it's not the worst phase you have and i was there when we got top tower we got the bottom right tower uh so that means bottom left tower is still up However, it's out of rotations. It's not too bad a phase, and Celestia was going to reset my tower timings. So I'm just going to tell people, I would just tell people to rotate during this, even though the bottom of tower is still up. But I would make sure to tell people to get the bottom of tower as soon as the out of rotation ends. So just, okay, get the bottom right tower, very nice, rotate with him for now. You're going to go to the bottom left tower, go to the bottom left tower real fast, get this bottom left tower real fast. He's in control, ignore him for now, get the bottom left tower. Bottom left tower is still up. And you see it finally goes down. You see, you can tell that the bottom left tower is still going up. You see these shots that are coming through? That means bottom left tower is still going wild. And they stop coming up because people finally deal with it. I believe this is another tier L run. Um, but once they're dealt with, then you're good to go. So I know, but I know at this point in time that my bottom left tower is a little bit off. So if we don't push into Celestial and towers come back up, I know my, bot my top tower is the first one down, bottom right. And then top left is going to be a little bit after that. So I can take that into account when, if they do come back up. So it's just armor crumples. We got him a decoy. It's the easy damage. We're pushing the celestial red about now, I think. And... Anyway, where is the celestial? Oh, yes, it was yeah, spicy tarot, and you see towers coming up. Towers are starting to come up again. Let's see what was that? The bottom right tower, I think. You see the bottom right tower was the first one to come up. Like the top tower and top bottom left tower didn't have a chance to come up during this. So it was just the first one in the pattern. So thankfully, we pushed him before all three towers came back up because that would be that would just be annoying to deal with. Um, something you need to know about Celestial is that towers always come back up shortly after Celestial now. And because of that, it's it's both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad thing sometimes if you if you if your celestial leads into heavens because it's you have a very tight window to get a guard or a stagger before the towers come up and towers can ru ruin that. However, for the most part, it's good because it reset tower timings. Um, so after the celestial, even though this bottom right tower was the only one that came up and it did come up, it's going to come up again. It was at the very same timing with all the other towers. So he does his little phase for a little bit, and now tower's going to come up. All towers are up now. And what you should do is get a tower rotation down. This is the most important time to get a tower rotation. You see, most of us are grouped up in the bottom right. My nearest tower after the bottom right tower will be the bottom left tower, and then the top tower. So I would say get the bottom right tower, and now go to the bottom left tower, and then get the top tower in that rotation. So you see the bottom two bottom towers are up. I think I'm just trying to go up DPS in this run because I don't know, Paddock said something. Um, and you see the top tower finally goes down thanks to these people. Uh, you want to make sure towers going down as a radiator. Uh, this is a this is a poor clip of me radiating. I, I just I think this is just a TRL run. Uh, I'll show you a better clip of orcs and towers in a little bit. 
Um, you see shield dashes. We're not really getting guards as daggers here. Uh, let's push to heavens finally. We're gonna get a second celestial. Actually, there is some unique mechanics that happen when you get a second celestial. Because after Celestial, Oryx will always let you do 5% uh, for as a thank you for surviving Celestial. And that means, um, normally, Heaven starts at which percent? 20? 20%. Normally, it's hard cap. Like, it will always start at 20%. However, Oryx will prioritize letting you get 5% over anything else. So if you, like, so if you get a second Celestial... Um, and it was like 21% HP, he'll let you do 5%, and you're at 16% HP. Essentially, what do you need to kill orcs then? 11%. 11%, which is basically what? Uh, two st or one stagger. One stagger, right? It's just something to be aware of. It's not always the same. It's, it's not always going to be like... He's gonna. He's not always gonna do a second celestial at like twenty one percent HP, but it's something to be a little bit aware of because like, your fight can change greatly. Like your aggression in the next bit of this might be might be really important. Like it can, it can make your fight end instantly instead of having a drawn out heavens, because the shorter heavens you have, the better run it is. Honestly. Also, tower is gonna come up right at the celestial. They'll always come up. Mad if you have like back to back to back celestial. Towers will come up. It's just how it's going to happen. So, heaven starts. We see slugs. What just happened? We had a second celestial. He's under. He's under his ma His he's under his twenty percent HP. If you look at the. If you look at his max HP now, uh, twenty percent HP is like two point two, two point three mil, something like that. We aren't under it by too much, but we are under it like eighteen, nineteen percent at the moment. So, you know, one good stagger. Um, we do have a decent phase. We have beams coming in. Beams always come in at the start of Heavens, except after a second Celestial. When you get a second Celestial, beam timings will differ a little bit. They'll come in a little bit later. Um, just And you see that. You, you, you could see the normal beams are coming across the floor here. That When you see normal beams on the floor, we don't have a Heaven wall. And we have Splendor. So we have a lot going in here. We have, we're going to have beams in a little bit, but we're not going to have them right away. He's doing Splendor, and he's stuck in the middle of the room because people are TP blocking him. But we also have towers coming up right away. So with all of those factors in play, I know that we have time to go right and then left, and then we should be backing out because beams should be coming in then, and towers going to be up, making it so that we can't do anything. So I'm going to tell people to go right and go left, in and out of beams. Okay, back up now, back up now, back up now. We have towers coming up now. You see towers are up now. Well, bottom right, bottom left, so we can't really do anything. I think we actually do get a stagger during this, and yeah, because some people went wild there. We didn't get the full five percent because this is time based. Stagger is time based. Like you either do um, five percent of his max HP, or um, he he's only down for a certain amount of time. But you see, it's a good chunk of damage, and every little bit counts. Like it was a very aggressive call to stay in during Splendor. But it's an easy phase. It's it's an easy enough phase that we can manage it, right? Like most people can manage that. And we did we did like a significant amount of damage, like from two two million down to uh, like one million almost. That's that's a good bit. And during heavens, you don't want to pass up any free damage. So sometimes, even if you're aware that beams are coming in, you want to tell people to stay stay in for a little bit, unless it's in and out of beams. The second you see in and out of beams, just tell people to scatter. Like you see in and out of beams here. Cosmos is kind of spicy. I tell people to cross early or cross late during it, and then it just ends from there. Um, that's most of Oryx's fight. There's a lot of nuances that come in. There are phase chains. There are guards. I, we didn't see a lot of that in that one clip. We'll pull up another clip so we can have a better look at that. Um, just give me a moment. But that's like if you if you have a general understanding of some of those things, then Oryx would be so much smoother, and you can work on it from there. Um, Let's see. Heaven, let, me just, let me talk a little bit more about heavens before I go into the second clip. Um, heavens, you'll have beams coming in every like there'll be three be, three beam strikes and then a heavens wall, like with it, which is like a solid line of beams. And you want to be counting during that. You want to be aware of some of the bad phase chains, like cowardice leads into an inner rotation or heaven or, or a cosmos. 
and cosmos and inner rotations are really bad to have during beams it gets really spicy i'm sure you've experienced that on a run um it, it's not too uncommon to happen to have both of those happen at the same time so if you know beams are coming in soon and you know inner rotation or cowardice is about to happen you might want to call people to back up and wait like just wait on the beams because like you don't want to be anywhere near orcs when that's happening uh, so let me just skip forward a little bit here and get the orcs fight. And this is a ball run, so it's going to go faster. Um, and you'll see a little bit of this. Uh, so we get the towers right away. One tower is still up. So uh, another thing to know about towers is that at the start of the fight, before uh, until Celestial happens, when three towers are up, he's invincible. When two towers are up, he's armored. When one tower is up, he's normal. And when no towers are up, he's armor broken before Celestial. At the Celestial, yeah, like it, it acts like there's always one tower up where like if three towers are down, he'll be normal. Yeah, if one tower is up, he'll be armored. Two towers up, he's invulnerable. Three towers up, he's invulnerable still. So that's a great way to know if towers are coming up or, or if there's a tower up that you don't see. So you see, we got a quick stagger here um, in this run. It's a quick guard. I call it and tell people to stop shooting. And then we have to take it down. It should be a nice quick stagger. And then, yeah, you see, we don't even stagger him because we didn't have enough damage during the reset. Slashes. This is a stationary one, which is a quick card, too. I also caught, and you see, like, like he's not flashing at all. People aren't damaging him. You have to call it a little bit ahead during these quick guards. You have to be aware of it. So I'm expecting these quick guards. And because of that, we're not getting these counters. Just let this fight go a little bit more. Splendor. We're in dance. We see that's that ten percent from the dance. I know we're going straight into exalted no matter what because of that ten percent threshold. It just just helps me build momentum. We get fate. Strangle people. I think we we'll get a stagger here because this is yoked damage. Celestia. Blah blah blah. Beams coming in, not too much, honestly. I think uh, I think I DC'd it in there. Yeah, shame. All right, yeah, but like really, orcs can be very simple if you're keeping the group ups, calling for potential resets, and that kind of thing. Um, I think there is more, but uh, I would there there is there is a lot more to the orcs fight. Um, however, a lot of it depends on your calls. Um. I think I should have prepared for the orcs, or the orcs talk, walk through a little bit more. Um, and no, uh, let, me just, let me just skip back a little bit. Um, a lot of the orcs fights depends on your calls as a raid leader, uh, whether it's grouping up away from him, calling for resets, and a lot of your call that you'll make, you, you, you need to have good decision making. And you develop good decision making over time, as well as gathering information whether it's being around the room to see how towers are going up so you know how they go down where it's knowing phase chains where it's knowing like how many how many phases he's done between two and five so you could start calling for potential resets where it's knowing when beams are coming in when it's knowing when to stay in when it's knowing when he's about to die so you can tell people to be extra aggressive like all these things will add up in the run um but for the most part, we should, we're should we just trying to get to a general overview on all these things. Um, and I think we've done most of that. Does anyone have a specific question about orcs before I go into some more tips and tricks? Well, let's go from top down. Chem still first. Okay. Um, one thing about the HP thresholds, do you know exactly what it is for guards? Okay, so guards are very iffy. Um, like uh, okay, so you know how you you know how instaing works? Like you do all this damage in one tick. Yeah. So guards are kind of like guards are kind of like that. So it's very hard for us to know the exact threshold. It can be anywhere between one and three percent. Okay. All right. It's just one and three percent very quickly. It can it can vary greatly because we're not sure when he's supposed to 
like be thresholded. Like like so, like during some of these cracked runs that we look at the HP things, like it's closer, it's more more commonly higher, I believe, because just because of tick damage. Like like you just, like because like you see you'll see. Um, let me just report Argusfy a little bit here. Let's see. Uh, like for I'm looking for a guide real quick. Okay, so he just slashes here. Like we see, we absolutely yoke him, and there's a little bit where he stops taking damage, and then and then he's vulnerable to getting to getting countered. Um, but like he's still technically taking damage a little bit, so it's very hard for us to get the threshold. We just need like it's just easier to know that if he's doing stationary, like a stationary guard phase, and you're all grouped up, then you're gonna get that guard sooner than later. I hope that answers your question a little bit. Um, it's very, we don't really know the exact percentages to get a guard. Just because there's so many factors that can make it very, like, variable. Yeah, makes sense. Any other questions, Kevin? Uh, no. All right, John, Aaron? I had the same question, actually, but, okay, so, if you get two guards, maybe that's about 5%, roughly, yeah, estimate? Yeah, roughly. Wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't tell people to shoot through, um, like counting on like like I wouldn't tell people to shoot through a stagger after that. Let's just say I had like four guards and a stagger. I wouldn't tell people to shoot through that like the stagger, because I could be I could be at twenty percent, or I could be at uh, like eighteen percent. Like it, it, you can be fucked. Like you could mess up your run. I've I, I've done that once. And once was enough for me. Like, so normally when you say shoot through, it's after like two staggers, right? And then I'm sorry, what? So normally when you say shoot through the guard, it's after yeah. two staggers. Yeah. Uh, or I had like three guards, and then I see a stagger. Like, okay, more than likely, he's pushed. He's he's like like well, maybe not three guards, like six guards or something, or five guards. I don't know. Ridiculous man. The thing is. He's only going to guard so many times, and he's going to reset. So depending on where the group is and how much reset damage we do, that can also go into my decisions. Uh, like it, it's a lot of experience and practice. Uh, like I've done it so many times that I can kind of guard gauge it just looking at the HP bar, um, looking at a reset damage. We did, we did a chunky reset damage. Like he did a guard, reset, guard, reset, and there's a stagger. Probably going to be pushing him. Like it, it's it's. Using my best judgment to the, so they'll make those kinds of calls. If you're not com comfortable, just tell people to stop shooting. Ultimately, if that's it, then we can go on to the next person. All right, Jen, you got a question? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you, Nini. Any questions? Nini, yeah, I'm gonna take that as an AFK and no. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. Thanks. Alright. Unicorn, any questions? Yeah, unicorn. Hi. <laughs> I just Mother got your son. Get no. the fuck out of here. <laughs> Alright, Elijah, any questions? Nope. Angry Dot showing up super late too. Hmm. Alright, well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a couple of little tips and tricks. I think most of my things are most of the things that I'm going to tell you here are already in the leading guides under a PDF that I had Paddock put up. Uh, not a PDF, it's a text document, I think. Um, you can read those there, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Paddock, pa Paddock changed into a, um, a drop-down. Um, like, a lot of my tips and tricks are there already. There's a couple of them, though, like uh, for phase chains. Phase chains can be really annoying to know. You should know the good ones, like Cosmos. Uh, if you guard like, and there's separate ones for guards. So let me let me back up a little bit more again. Um, if you get armor couples, what does armor couples lead into? Uh, splendor and panic and scream. Panic and scream and splendor. Panic and scream is this one right now. Splendor, it's the one where it throws out the bombs. You go right, left, down, up, right. It, it's those are pretty good damage phases. So you know, armor couples leads into that. Um, so you want to know which which of the phases lead into good phases. So Fleeing is futile leads into armor crumples and panning and scream. Panning and scream is a good one. Armor crumples leads into good stuff. So in other words, fleeing is futile can lead into good stuff. Armor crumples leads into good stuff. If you see those, that's the phase chain you should know. Um, shield dashes. 
uh, is a staggerable phase, but it leads into decent phases uh, as well, like slashes or splendor. Like so, shield dash leads into slashes or splendor. It could be SSS to remember it. That's another good one to know. Um, let's see what other one? What other one should I call? Um, hmm. Okay, so let me just go ahead. Like so, yeah, those three are pretty decent to know. Um, I'm gonna say Cosmos isn't too bad, or Fury Jumps either. Cosmos uh, leads into cowardice or inner rotations. Like, the, okay, the, that's a bad one. But like, if you guard Cosmos, it leads into either another Cosmos or a Splendor. And Splendor is a good phase. Another Cosmos is whatever. Like, if you guard one Cosmos, you can guard a second Cosmos. And if you go what off off what I said earlier, um. Uh, on phase sequences, uh, phase chains, where he goes between two and five. If you get a cosmos, a guard, a cosmos, and then you get, he does another cosmos and you guard that, you're technically on four. More than likely, he's going to reset. Or he'll do a cosmos of splendor, which isn't bad either. So that's a good one to know. Uh, let's see, what else? What other one? Um, slashes is a good one to know. Because if you guard slashes, then that leads into armor crumples, which leads into good phases, or panic and scream. So guarding slashes leads into panic and scream or armor crumples. Um, and I think there's one. So that's what, like, so of the ones that I said, there is there is armor crumples, which is which leads into splendor, panic and scream. There's playing his feet tile, which leads into armor crumples or panic and scream. There's uh, shield dashes, which leads into slashes. And slashes guard leads into uh, uh, which is which is good as well as splendor, which is also good. Um, then there's then there's the bad ones where there's a bunch of chase phases. Like, uh, and I'll make this very simple for you. Um, chase phases lead into other chase phases. As long as you know which ones of of his phases are chase phases, and you can look them up. These are the bad ones uh, 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 when it's referred to as, as the bad phases in psychosis guides, like the, the hard to guard or hard to stagger ones. So all these bad phases will lead into other ones. What you need to know is when bad phases end. And bad phases, so bad phases will chain until either he resets or he um, gets guided or staggered, or he goes into a good phase. So you want to keep people away from these bad phases until he finally does a phase that breaks up into good ones. So what I mean by that is, like, he'll do um, playing his futile into, uh, I mean, not fleeing his he'll do fates into something like fleeing his futile. And fleeing his futile leads into good phases, because fleeing his futile leads into armor couples or panning and scream. Or, and if it does armor couples, then armor couples leads into Someone? Oh, Panic and Splendor. Panic and Splendor. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. There you go, Elijah. Um, so, as long as you're aware of which bad phase changes lead into the breakers, which is Fling and Speak Tile or Armor Crumples, then you just need to wait for those to happen or wait for a reset. And that, like, that's like the other half of the phase chain sequence chopped off. I think that's most of what I want to talk about. Um, a, a lot of the other things, a lot of the things I would like to say, I would really need to have someone like leading a leading a run and me feedbacking feedbacking off of it, because there are like you can make some calls that can be good at the time or bad, and it's just it depends a lot. And I think we've covered most of what I would like to say about Oryx itself that could give you some grounding and leading it. It really doesn't, it really gets easier over time. Like after two weeks of trying to lead orcs, it really becomes a lot easier. Uh, I've seen that a lot. So like if you have any interest in leading, um, I would recommend taking a look at the leading guides to look at Salkos's big, big little thing for that. And once you've gone over that, by all means, ask for a TRL. Like, are we happy to go over it? I'll uh, be happy to TRL you with it, get you ready for it. Um, I think Kaibi is also uh, ready for uh, ready for some more TRLs or improvements. Let's see. I, I think I've talked about mostly everything. We've gone over everything by this point. Um, if you have any other questions, now's the time to voice them, whether it's mini boss, O3, sequences, anything. Anyone? 
okay, then I think we're good because I've been talking for like an hour and a half about O3 and they're like, uh, I think I am covered most of most of the things that I would want to say. So thanks for coming. I uh, hope some of this was helpful. Hope some of my rambling was beneficial in some way or giving you some insight. Um, yeah, I think we're good here. Dan, you have anything you want to say? I just woke up, man. I just... What is this new IGN, like Dan? Lucy Pussy Bird. All uh, right, well... Thanks, thanks Clue. Yeah. That's the classroom, guys. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks, Clue. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I hope it was at least somewhat interesting. Or informative. Mm-hmm. But all right, thanks for coming. See you guys later.